Hi guys, uh, my name is Corey Gwynn. I am a systems engineer with Cisco Meraki. Uh, I've been with the company since it was a startup uh, when I started in San Francisco. Moved to London about six years ago, then now I live in Amsterdam, um, working with service providers and all, all things Meraki and, and IoT stuff. Uh, but today I really wanted to focus on kind of what else I've been doing. Um, I will be talking a little bit about, you know, specifically the Meraki stuff. Uh, but really, I want to talk to you really about my journey of how I've started to understand what the Internet of Things are, uh, is, and all the, the technologies behind that. So uh, it really all started with Lego for me. Um, I became an engineer um, really when I was maybe like 10 years old, and I built this giant Lego structure that had like a working elevator in it. And my dad said, you know, you, I should be an engineer. And at that time, I thought like a train engineer, you know? And he was like, no, someone who builds things for a living. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I could do that. So Lego really gave me the tool to allow me to, you know, actually create something. Um, you know, I have ideas, and then I can make it tangible. And I really love that concept. Well, fast forward a couple of years, uh, several years, um, and I'm you know, sitting at my computer, and um, one of my colleagues was playing with this program called Node-RED. He was trying to do some home automation. You know, he walks into his room, uh, and maybe like the, the window shades you know, open and shut, and you know, fancy stuff like that. So he was playing a little bit with that. And I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and around the same time, um, I had gotten a Lego train set for Christmas. <laughs> My wife randomly got it, and she probably didn't understand the, um, the Pandora's box that, that would open. I was like, oh, Legos again, awesome. <laughs> and so I had this Lego train set, and uh, you, know, you could control it with infrared. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And I was like, I wonder if I could automate this thing somehow. And I was looking at the Node-RED application. I was like, I wonder if I could like, link these things together and do like an IoT train set. And I was like, all right, well, how do I do this? And so then I started looking at, you know, like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos, and I was trying to understand, well, what is the difference between those two? You know, are they the same thing? Do I write them in the same languages? And then I started to really understand, like, the nuances where a Raspberry Pi is basically just a, a system on a chip, a small Linux computer at the end of the day, and you tend to use, like, higher-level languages with that, you know, JavaScript and Python, as well as Node-RED. Um, but then, like Arduino, I was like, well, what, what would you do with that? Well, that tends to be more of, you know, it's a microcontroller. So you're writing on a lower level type of code, like C, C. And I was like, well, generally, C is kind of tedious to write in. I'm like, oh, do I really want to go that route? But I understood there's certain value in delegating tasks to a microcontroller. Things like moving a servo, right? That's just a motor but you have to send pulses to it constantly to actually change the direction where that's going to be. Well, you don't want to tie up your normal computer with those operations, so you delegate that to a microcontroller. And so now I'm like, okay, well, I got to learn C++, uh, which I studied like once in school, and I completely forgot it. Uh, did a little assembly, too. Luckily, I have nothing to do with assembly anymore. Um, but then I was trying to figure, okay, my goal with my train set, I want to do something really simple. I just want to be able to detect if a train is going and uh, maybe move down a crossing arm. And so that required a sensor, and it required some type of communication and something to control that servo. And that is really where my whole project kind of started, from that, that one objective. And so I'm, I was thinking, how do I relate this back to the Internet of Things so I'm just not some guy playing with Legos, right? <laughs> so, okay. What is the Internet of Things? It's like the hot topic, it's the new buzzwords. I'm like, well, what? I mean, I know what the Internet is, I know what things are. I mean, how is this different than computers and servers talking, right? And so I really kind of started breaking it down. And as I see the Internet of Things, it's really just a collection of sensors, so inputs. You have some sort of logic that does analysis or it just kind of routes that traffic somewhere. And then you have your outputs, actuators, servos, motors, light switches, all, all that sort of things um, now can start communicating. And it could be just little bits of data, you know, just the temperature, just the state uh, of something, maybe motion detection. And it's how you start aggregating that data 
and you start leveraging all of these other uh, pieces to start doing interesting things with it. Now, again, I'm, I'm not really a programmer by trade. I've been basically a network engineer like the last 20 years. And so I was trying to relate how do I get into this world of connecting things that tends to be more programming oriented, but you know, leverage my skills as a network guy. And again, I keep coming back to this program called Node-RED where you're basically sending data as message objects, right? little payloads. And that, to me, it sounds like a network. Right? I have my packets, so I have packet headers, and I'm routing that traffic, and I'm doing interesting things with it. So that's exactly how Node-RED functions. You basically have um, these nodes, these little you know, uh, widget things off to the right. Those each um, represent some portion of the IoT network, right? Um, off to the left, you tend to have your inputs. In the middle, you may have some function, like a JavaScript function or some pre-programmed like, logic. And then off to the end, you have your outputs. Um, the green boxes here are just debug nodes where they just print to a console. But that could easily be, you know, send a tweet, send a text message, um, send uh, something to a Spark room, right? All of these things now are, are the outputs. And so I actually built uh, an application using Node-RED, which was really just a tool developed by IBM um, and kind of their emerging technology space. It's open source, um, has an active uh, you know, developer community, and allows you to really just kind of hack around for free. You just play with it. You have all, all sorts of possibilities of how you can connect things. So I actually built a node um, using JavaScript, or Node.js, rather. Um, where I'm able to consume the Meraki location uh, data, right? So I can use Meraki access points that are listening for Bluetooth beacons or phones in your pocket that are scanning for a network. You know, when your phone says, there's available networks, would you like to join? Well, it knows that because that phone sent out a broadcast. And your access points um, can just record that. And they could reply and say, these are my SSIDs, you can join. Meraki access points will happen to just say, right, I heard you ask for a network. This was the time of day. These were the three access points that heard you, and I'm going to triangulate that information. Now, I'm going to send all of that into a JSON format into something that cares. So just like Splunk was able to start consuming that data, I'm going to consume it in my own application here. So all this is really doing is pulling in that data, and then what I actually did is I just searched for a client. So it scans that data, and it looks for my MAC address on my phone. And if it sees it, it says, you know, welcome back, Corey. We missed you, right? And if it hasn't seen me in a while, it's like, Corey, are you, are you coming back? And, and so I actually built this at the last hackathon. And so we had APs everywhere. And I used um, a Twilio integration, so sending text messages. And so if I left the hackathon, I would start getting notifications like, dude, you got to get back to the hackathon. <laughs> right? And so I come back in, because it's a 48-hour job, so I was like trying to take breaks. But I would annoy myself by leaving. I was like, OK, I got to go back. Right? So that's just a simple application. But you can imagine all the sorts of Internet of Things. I'm triggering actions based on you know, context. And that's the whole idea. So um, back to my, my Lego story. <laughs> um, what I did is I built a massive Lego city. Um, it started with just, <laughs> it, it started with just a, a simple train set. You know, it went in an oval. And well, now I figured I could probably buy a lot more Legos for educational research. Uh, so I started buying a lot. And everything I bought, I was like, well, now I got to figure out how I can connect this to my Internet of Things. So what I did is I would really just, you know, I, I do these presentations in terms of technology, and I would, as a sales engineer, try to figure out use cases for this technology. And one way I figured out is instead of me just you know, selling the dream and talking about all the great things you can do and then waiting for some customer to actually invest in it and rebuild it, and I hope that it actually worked, um, what I'm actually going to do is, well, I just buy a bunch of Legos, and I represent the exact same fundamental concepts, but at a small scale with little plastic people. right? <laughs> and it's been great. So here's just an example of some of the, the projects I was doing. So um, I would have like a weather sensor that detects humidity and temperature and all that. And then I would relay that using MQTT. So it's a low, uh, it's, it's a messaging protocol 
um, where it's, you subscribe or uh, publish um, small bits of information. And so I would send that up to, to Node-RED, and then I would rebroadcast it. And so off to the left is an actual billboard, and it shows my local weather and time and cycles through a message of the day. I come into the room, Meraki Access Point detects my phone, sends a message to the billboard, says, welcome home, Corey. Right? I'm connecting things here. Um, the city itself, you can see the palace cinema. Those are actually rainbow lights that are going on. If a movie is playing in my neighborhood, if it's a premiere, the marquee lights will start triggering off. And then you can start to see like the lights in the theater start moving around and all of that. I also have um, other lights. If someone visits my website, I call it my disco test, or like my hello world, um, it triggers just a rest call, and the lights will start flashing. So I can tell if people are, are visiting my blog or going to my website. Um, one of my proudest things is off to the right was the train, right? So this one I went pretty complex with. I used an ESP8266, which is a small microcontroller. It's basically a Wi-Fi chipset where people have been able to hack it and basically run additional code on it, right? So it's really small, fits in the palm of your hand. And I put that inside of my Horizon Express train. And so now that's connected to the Wi-Fi. And then now I can use Node-RED to control my train via Wi-Fi. Well, why would I do that? Well, my infrared train was awesome until it went under the, the city. I couldn't see it, so infrared can't see it to control it. And now I wanted to also do cool things like um, run a schedule. So I tied into the Transport for London system. So I go get their entire train network. And now I pull in the local train schedules, and I put them on a tiny OLED screen. And my train um, across the street would go to basically two train stations, Chess Hunt and, and Enfield Town. And depending on which way it's going to go, I would actually switch the LEGO train tracks using a little servo, microcontroller attached to that, then start the train, you know, and I could look at the schedule and know if I'm going to make my train in time, right, just by looking at my train city. A um, couple other little fun projects I did. Uh, a motion sensor, you can see the, the little Cisco uh, a Lego piece there. It basically just detects human presence. And then I would turn on the lights in my city. And if no motion, it would turn it off. So that's my energy saver concept there. Um, and then I also have an RFID badge. So my, my little two-year-old daughter loves playing with these badges. And so I decided I'm just going to build one myself. And so I bought some RFID scanners off of like, you know, some Chinese website, got there a month later for about five bucks, and I was like, all right, what can I do with this? Again, I attached it to a small microcontroller, connects to the Wi-Fi, and then I have just like um, these little functions that look for these serial numbers. And so if you scan, it'll either beep success or beep fail, and then I had a couple of badges, and so if you scanned one, it would start my train. The other one would turn on the lights on a, on a palace cinema, you know, marquee or what have you. So just ways of interacting, you know, I can unlock something. So, you know, I did a lot of stuff with Lego, which was awesome, but I also have a day job too, so I went back to Meraki stuff, right? <laughs> so this one's really cool. Uh, we were working with um, Heineken, and they wanted to be able to track their kegs, um, because kegs cost some money, right? And what they were able to do is put a little $5 Bluetooth beacon on all their kegs. They put a Meraki access point in each one of their bars or the local areas. Now, the access point would detect the presence of that keg. And so that allowed them to understand where the kegs were out you know, throughout the city. And then we tied in with Cisco Spark. So if I were to click on a keg, it would generate a work order and a Spark room and say, uh, this keg is, is ready to be collected. Right? So really cool things of, of tying it all together. And I'll show a little bit of demos if I have any time left at the end. Um, I also tied in with the Meraki dashboard API. So network orchestration. How do I change the SSID of a network? How do I um, connect uh, or list my license status and devices? Or maybe I'm a service provider, and I don't want to provide the full access to the dashboard. Maybe it's a managed service, and I want to provide the customer with just uh, a few essential tools. Or maybe a technician um, who needs to do deployment, and he only needs a small subset of tools. So what I did is I built my own web service using Node-RED where I basically create my own API to then call the Meraki API, and then I built my own um, 
app using Angular JS and Ionic, um, which then calls my API. So I've created this, this filter where I can control the security and the options that are available while using Meraki APIs in the background. Um, and then the final one that I did with, with Meraki was a captive portal. So I have my Lego cafe here. Kip, the typical use case is like you want to have you know, a hot spot, um, you know, hotels, cafes. And I use that exact same concept, but instead of like just IoT stuff, it, it really is just a web server. Um, I have my handle, my XCAP click, which is basically like the URL you would go to. And it basically presents a HTML, CSS splash page. Um, and then you enter the information in. And then I can store um, that into a database. Now I have your MAC address, your IP, your email. And then I can link that to maybe location services, open up a Spark room as soon as you've logged in. You know, if you want to have like an ambassador who's you know, there once you've logged in, all of these things can now start to be connected. And again, this is how I see you know, technology, it's, it's networking and it's Legos to me. It's like APIs and servers are all the same things. I'm just connecting the dots and building things. And once I kind of figured out the knobs and the, the options, yeah, there's a lot to learn, but it's, it's really fun, you know? And I've, I've been able to understand a lot more about the world, basically, in, in terms of technology and, and mechanics um, through my IoT, you know, projects. So um, I got just a few minutes, so I'm going to try to show just a few of you know, things in action. So this is my, my website where I basically you know, document all of these projects that I do, all open source. Every single thing I've written, I, I give you the schematics, the, the code in whatever language I'm learning of the week, uh, and then examples and all that sort of stuff. Some of it's complicated. Some of it's pretty straightforward. But either way, it's interesting um, to, to go through all that. Um, Here's an example of, this is the city itself. It's all managed um, in this Node-RED application. And you can actually see up to the right, this is actually real-time data um, that's going in. So it's sending billboard messages right now. So if I were to come into the room, it would update that and, and send me some more interesting information. Um, I can see like all of the different components that I have off to the left, like uh, my disco. Uh, it's going to turn on a bunch of lights in the city. I can turn on the lights or, or off and on. I can you know, switch my tracks um, for the trains, uh, you know, control them both by infrared, motion sensors, via Wi-Fi. I just built everything. And so at this point, I'm like, well, if I connect this dot to this dot, what can I get away with? Or can I connect this to this? And now like, you know, the possibilities are endless. And so then I can slap on a, a simple UI, and I can control it in a more like uh, friendly way. So now I can control maybe my, uh, my water fountain. I was learning MicroPython the other day, and so I made um, a little water fountain in my LEGO city, and I can control the RGB lights um, using this, just because I can. <laughs> um, I was getting like my local weather stats and pulling that information out, representing that, and seeing how all that works together. And then you can kind of see, the, again, the live stream of data that's coming in. Um, Kind of going to the Meraki side, you can see my, my simple app that I was writing here, where again, I can manage my Meraki dashboard, and I can do all the typical things you might want to do, but I built my own dashboard. So now I don't have to go to my product guys and beg for features. I'm like, oh, I wish I could do this. I decided I'm just going to build it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then share the source code. And so really what this is doing, <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so this is basically just tying into a Node-RED backend. And so now instead of my city, this is actually pulling in device status, claiming a device, showing my network devices. It's all the same now. It's, it's Internet of Things. It's dashboard management. I mean, once I've learned these basic technologies, I can pretty much do anything. Um, and then here's an example of the Heineken map where I could say, um, I s found my 27 kegs. I can hover over them. I can say, collect this keg. And you should see, if I hit OK, collection request sent. And then eventually, um, a Spark Room um, uh, message would, would appear. And it would say, your keg is ready for collection. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, about this, uh, yeah. 
where's your craggle switch? Yeah. <laughs> and how much craggle did you use? Yeah, well, my material was threatening to get involved. And I was like, I was actually becoming that guy. I was like, no, everything's perfect. <laughs> uh, so I've had to build a special zone for her. It's a safe space, right? So. Yeah, good. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> cool. All right. All right.